So let's look at a new circuit, which we have an AC source, we have a resistor, we have a capacitor. But now instead of them being in series, they're in parallel. So I'm going to pose a question. I want you to po pause the video and answer it, and then come back to the video soon. So which measurement is shared? Current as a function of time? or voltage as a function of time. So pause now and see if you can answer for this one. All right. So if we use our loop rule, we will get two possible loops. And this loop rule will give us that Vs as a function of time minus Vr as a function of time is equal to 0 and that Vs as a function of time minus Vc as a function of time is equal to 0, so that Vs of t equals Vr of t, Vs of t equals Vc of t. So we have that voltage is the shared measurement. Looking at this junction rule, we can look at the current coming in and then the current coming out. If we look at that from the junction rule, the current coming in is the current from the source, and the current coming out is the current over the resistor plus the current over the capacitor. So we'll find a use for this later, but right now we have a new thing. Previously, all of our AC circuits have been in series. It's what they usually are, but we want to right, have a little bit of interesting stuff with this. So voltage is our shared measurement. So if voltage is the shared measurement, we have that the voltage of our source as a function of time is equal to the maximum voltage, and then we're setting the voltages phase to be zero. So if we draw a phasor diagram, then our voltage, which we can draw any arbitrary place, would be something like this, is going to be what we want it to be. Now, if voltage is the shared measurement, then the current of these resistors is going to be capital V max over R. And then our resistor is in phase. So we can write the resistance as a in phase. And we can look at this I max. So right, our cosine is what changes. This is what's going to change. And our I max is going to be, as we expect from Ohm's law, V max over capital R. And then our capacitor is going to be omega C capital V max cosine. And we saw in previous times, right, that the voltage of the capacitor lagged behind the current. So now we'll have the current of the capacitor. Sorry, this is I sub R. The current of the capacitor is going to lead. And so we have then the current over the resistor and the current over the capacitor is going to be omega C V max. But for this to work with the right reactants, I'm going to rewrite this as capital V max over 1 divided by omega C. Just so we have all our resistance type terms in the same place that we expect them. So now, instead of doing that the voltages add up to a source voltage, now we're doing the currents add up to a source current.
So we would then have this be the i s. So we have then that our i sub s vector is equal to i sub c vector plus i sub r vector. But probably more important and more useful to us is looking at it from a triangle point of view, where this is i r, the maximum current through the resistor, i c, the maximum current through the capacitor. And then we have our i sub s. And we have our voltage, which is the shared measurement. So this looks hopefully pretty good. Hopefully we feel pretty good about all of this. It's just we're adding currents instead of voltages now. And so we have that, we have Pythagorean theorem again, i sub s squared is equal to i sub c squared plus i sub r squared for our maximum value. So I sub C is V max quantity squared over this one divided by omega C quantity squared. I sub R is V max quantity squared over R squared. So we can then look at this and see that our source, if we take the derivative or the square root of both sides, we get one over R squared plus one over one divided by omega c quantity squared uh, oof. yeah, times v max. So this is very similar to how parallel resistors added when we added resistors in parallel. So that's a really nice sign. Lastly, we can take a look at this phase angle phi. And so we have that the tangent of our phase angle is going to be I sub C max over I sub R max. So our phase angle phi is going to be the arctan of capital V max over one over omega C over capital V max over R. We have a lot of very ugly division math to go through. We'll make it a little bit easier with this divide by V max. So then this R goes up on top. And so we can write our phase angle as the arc tangent of R over one over omega C, or if we want to just bring it all over, we have it as the arc tangent of omega RC. So very similar to what we have for our series, it's just we now have to remember, right, which is the shared measurement and go through which one is our shared measurement all the way through. We get similar results, right? We get a kind of parallel addition for our Z, but we get somewhat of a similar result for our arc angle, phase angle.